Hey, this is RJ May, and you're watching Mr. Mario 2011. Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be doing this commentary because uh, it was actually, you know, I have to say this because I wouldn't feel right if I didn't say it, but uh, one of my good friends on here, Dopesoner930, he recently did a commentary, uh, kind of something like this, uh, and his commentary was, I believe was something along the lines of how Call of Duty ruined gaming for me, and I commented this story on there and we had talked about it a bit, but it made me start remembering this, and I have talked about it a little bit on this channel before. In fact, I talked about it when I had less than a thousand subscribers, for sure. But, I had an effect that was a lot like that, that made me remember it. And, it was even worse than that. Because it wasn't just one game. Now, he had one game that ruined gaming for him. But what if I told you that gaming was completely ruined for me for about two or two and a half years. Just completely and utterly destroyed for me while I was working at a video game store. Yeah, as ironic as that is, I hated video games, and I was working at a video game store. Now, first off, some people might be asking, well, Mario, if you hated video games, why were you working there? Well, here's the thing. When I first started working there, I loved video games. In fact, playing video games was mostly what I consisted of doing when I was 14 and 15 years old. Uh, when I was 14, because I've, I've been playing games since I was, what, 8, 9 years old, something like that, when I got, like, my first system... But at that point in time, it was 14 or 15, and I remember, like, some people, they would say, because now, you know, I look back on it as an adult, and I'm able to explain it in a logical, rational fashion, you know. Some people were saying, oh, you know, if you play video games all the time, you don't have a life, all this stuff. Well, you know, I played a lot of video games, you know, my freshman, sophomore years of high school. So that was when I was, like, 14 to 16. And really, right around the time I was 16, which I turned 16 in, my birthday's in April, and school gets out in May. So, you see, every single year, I turn, like, I, I, I level up in age, like, near the end of that school year. So, what happened was, I really wasn't driving or anything until the end of the school year. Just like, you know, when I was 18, I really wasn't legally an adult until pretty much the end of high school. So, there were just a lot of things that were like that. Now... When it comes down to it, pretty much I noticed when I was 16, my gaming just kind of, you know, went from a ton to not that much. <laughs> now, the reason why I say that is because I really, I was kind of, I always had breaks with gaming. I would love games, I would stop playing them for a few months, I would love games again, I would stop playing them for like a month or two. I'd love games, I'd stop playing them for like five months. I was always like that, It just, you know, whatever it was. Modding was one thing, though. Modding was a thing I always came back to. And that's probably because I had a big background in computers. I had always done stuff like that with my dad's laptop and with other laptops and computers. And, you know, sometimes I broke them and sometimes I got viruses. But other times, you know, now it's getting to the point where it's kind of funny because now there's people, like, literally in town. Uh, there are people who run businesses who knew me when I was, like, 8, 9, 10 years old who sold games and CDs to me and all that. And now I'm an adult. I'm living on my own and everything, even though I'm still doing all my kids' stuff here. Look at me. I'm still, I'm still doing all the stuff I did when I was a kid. I'm still making videos. I'm still playing video games. I'm still hanging out with friends and doing all that fun stuff. But what I'm trying to say is now I'm an adult, and now they're not looking up to me, but now they're asking me and hiring me to help them out with these things. So computer things, that's always something I've been basing. I kind of transition that over to my game systems. But what happened was it was like in 8th grade, I really started picking up gaming again. Uh, I was into the PSP modding scene hard. I was like hard hitting at that. Ninth grade, 10th grade, so you know, 14 to 16 years old. Really, there wasn't much to do. In my town, see, here's the thing. My town is small, but it's also big enough that people are spaced out. So really, let's say I wanted to hang out with some friends at the mall, right? It's a Saturday, so I got to call up all my friends. I got to round them up. Sometimes I can't get a hold of them. Sometimes I can and then I'm just like, hey, dad, can you give me a ride at 12.30 to the mall? And can you pick me up at 3.30? And then he might say, okay, well, I can drop you off, but I can't pick you up until 6 o'clock. And I'm like, well, my friends are all leaving at like 4. So then I got to coordinate with them, be like, hey, can I get a ride with one of you? And they have to coordinate with their older brothers, their older sisters, uh, their parents, anyone like that. Y you see how hard it is? Pretty much... Uh, up until then, there were a lot of times where I had very limited hangout time with my friends. Not because I was antisocial, not because, you know, my parents didn't want me to hang out with people, but just because 
it was it was hard getting around honestly it really was some people might say oh you know you could just walk to friends houses you could use bikes all that stuff uh, we were spaced out enough to the point where it wasn't as viable unfortunately so you know there were times for example i didn't want to see a movie there were times i i was burned out at the mall going to the mall but you know that's that's what you do when you're a teenager and you can't really do anything you can't drive or anything like that but pretty much once i turned 16 this is pretty much what happened hey dad can i borrow the car What's up? I need to go. Well, I want to go to the mall. I'll be there for like four hours. Okay. It'll be like, sure. Here's the keys. Come back at this time. Easy as that. That's it. We could all coordinate that stuff. We'll coordinate all of that super easily. When I was 14 to 16, though, didn't work out that way as much. So I spent a lot of time playing games and gaming. You know, when I wasn't at school, I was gaming. And that's also when I was a big achievement whore, huge achievement whore. I remember my first year I had my 360, I went from 0 to 10,000 gamer score. Second year, I went from 10,000 to 40,000 gamer score. And then after that, I pretty much slowed down. But that that 30,000 in one year, and this was, you know, this was, what, 2008 to 2009? That that was a real big jump back then. So I was a real big gamer score, or huge. And I'm so happy I'm not able to do that. But now when people see that inflated gamer score, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's kind of what happens when you don't have a life for a few years. <laughs> But, you know, I've never gone back to that. But how much was I gaming? Well, I mean, honestly, I was probably gaming anywhere from 20 to 40 hours a week, realistically. That's really how it was. I would come home, you know, I did all my other stuff, but I was playing video games and all. And there were times where I had to, you know, stop playing the Xbox. Like, I was grounded off it or something because, you know, my grades dropped a little bit. So I couldn't play my Xbox. I couldn't play games. Uh, there were times where I was only limited on weekends to playing uh, and another thing was, you know, I always played like in the living room. A lot of my friends, they were playing in their, uh, what is it, in, in their own personal bedrooms and all that, which that was, oh my god, that was just, that was such a luxury that I wanted, but I couldn't have, unfortunately, because my parents were all like, no, you gotta play out in the living room. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's how it was. What I'm trying to say here is I absolutely loved gaming. Loved video games, couldn't get enough of it. And then I was always visiting my mom. Now, my mom lived next to a game store that just opened up. And I remember the first time I went there, I uh, there were like two things. I picked up a CD and I picked up Halo 2. Uh, and it was funny because I think the CD I ended up selling off later. And Halo 2 I got as an early Christmas present for a friend of mine. But they were both really cheap. I decided to pick them up. And then later on that day, I was just like, you know... They also had Mass Effect. I've been really wanting to play Mass Effect, and it was only 25 bucks. This is when it was really expensive at the time, so I was like, you know, I think I'll go pick up Mass Effect. So I swung by there, picked up Mass... Well, grabbed the case for Mass Effect, go over to the counter, and I'm talking with the manager there. Well, actually, the manager was talking with someone, and I don't... I think it was something related to PS3, but we start talking... And I kind of like interject my opinion in and I'm talking, I'm kind of helping him out. And I kind of helped out with a sale almost. So then what happened is the manager and I, we start talking and he's like, you know, well, what's your name? And we introduced ourselves and he's like, hey, do you got Xbox Live? I said, yeah. He's like, okay. He pulls out a piece of paper. Here's my gamer tag. Whenever you go home, go ahead and add me. We could probably play a game or something. I was like, damn. All right, that's cool. Now this guy, no, I was 15. This guy was what, 22, 23 at the time, I want to say. So I'm just like, okay, damn, this, this older guy, he wants to like play games with me on Xbox Live and all. This is awesome. You know, I, I must have won his respect over somehow. And what ended up happening was that's how I got introduced to the game store. And, you know, it'd get to the point I would go there. I would, you know, hang out with him, talk with other people, all that. And I got to know his friends and all that. But pretty much when I got hired... I asked uh, if they were hiring. He said he'll look into it, and I was able to get a job. That's going to be another story. That's a funny story. It's a smaller story, but I'll tell that in a separate commentary. So I got hired, and pretty much they said, as soon as you're out of school this semester, you're hired. So pretty much when May came around, I was hired in. Now, this place was a freaking dream to me. First off, they had cheap video games. They had movies. They had music. They had all that stuff. We also ended up working with a cat later, too, because it was a cat that started living there. <laughs> so that was really awesome, even though I was allergic to cats. But we had all that. And as I said, everything was cheaper than our retailers. And it was a mom and pop shop. And then I also got my employee discount on there. But if I didn't want to buy something, guess what? I could borrow games. I could borrow things. And it was, it was the coolest thing ever. For about the first month. 
See, there were two things that contributed to this. One, it was a summer job. So pretty much, I wasn't doing anything over the summer. So I was working there almost every day, open to close. Because I didn't mind. What the hell else was I supposed to do? Just sit at home and do nothing? Play video games, get on the internet? No, I was like, you know what? I can just go hang out. Because to me, it was more like it was a fun job. Like, I actually worked and I was coming home tired every day. Because it was retail, you got to stand on your feet. You really got to, you know, exhibit all of your there's times you got to hold back on people and there's other times, you know, you have to really use your brain for things. It's not like construction or anything like that, but a job is still a job. And if you're working there, you're going to be tired, especially if you're on your feet, you're doing all your duties all around the store, keeping track of everything. You're going to be tired by the end of the day. And no, I didn't really, we weren't allowed to play video games on the job. I got that question asked a lot. The two questions I got asked were, do you get free games and can you play games on the job? No. I couldn't play games on the job, except there was like, sometimes we could test games, like, but I didn't actually play them. It was just, you know, making sure the game actually worked and all that. The only exception was really, there was one time after Christmas, super big blizzard came in. Nobody came into the store. For seriously, like the, the, the first like three hours, two people came into the store, excluding my manager and I. So my manager was just like, I, I even asked him, I was like, hey, I just got Borderlands and nobody's coming into the store. Do you care if I play? And he's like, yeah, go ahead. You can grab the game, pop it into your system, uh, pop it in the system over here. I honestly don't care. Just my only exception is if somebody comes in, pause the game. So for about two or three hours, I got to play Borderlands uninterrupted, which is really nice. Uh, the only other times when I got free games or some worse, like if it was something that was sitting in the back room and because we resurfaced our games as well, if, it, if a disc had a scuff on it, we couldn't get out. If a disc was cracked... We did not sell those discs or anything like that. So if there was anything that was still workable but was not for sale, like we could not sell it, normally we could either grab it for either a discounted price or free. And I always asked, I never swiped anything. I always asked everyone, is it cool? And they said, you know, sure. If it was yes, you know, you can buy it or you can just take it for free. Whatever it was, I would get it. So there were some bendings to that rule. But no, like it's not like a brand new game comes out and I could just get it for free or anything. No, can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, so what ended up happening was that first month, month and a half, it was great. I was borrowing games. I was buying games for cheap, all that fun stuff. And then what ended up happening was I was just, the problem was I was around video games all day, every day. Literally, that was it. And it wasn't even just playing video games. I was surrounded by them. And if you've worked in retail or you know anybody that works in retail, you know that once you start working in retail, you develop a hatred for humanity that you cannot, it takes years of working outside of retail to break free from it. But you just start hating humans. You start hating people. <laughs> and if, if you've never, if this sounds sadistic to you, if it sounds messed up, you have never worked in retail because every single person I talk to who's worked in retail they can completely sympathize with that emotion right there. You learn to hate people. You think of people as just the stupidest creatures on earth. <laughs> and I'm not kidding about that, but you become so pessimistic. And then I linked that with gamers that were complete assholes with video games. And then what ended up happening was really once I turned 16, I had much more of a social life, you know, both at work, like pretty much at like I was not coming home until like 9, 10, 11, sometimes midnight in the evening. Uh, I was coming home late because, you know, I would get off work. I would hang out with my manager and all of his friends would go around. We do stuff. I would come back home and sleep. That was it. By that time I came home, I was exhausted. The last thing I wanted to do, because remember, I was about 16 at this time. All my friends were around the same age, you know, that I knew from school and we played on Xbox Live. 15 and 16 year olds love to yell on Xbox Live. The last thing I wanted to do was fire up my Xbox, put on my headset, and hear people screaming in my ear. So there were many times I would just use my Xbox. In fact, like for like two years, my Xbox was a DVD player. That was it. The PlayStation 3, I ended up getting a PlayStation 3 during this time period. This is from 2009 to 2011. I got a PS3 during this time period just because it was an entertainment system. That was it. Because I wanted to put movies and music on there and I could watch Blu-rays. Those were the only reasons why I got a PS3. And I well, actually ended up, you know, going out and purchasing one. If there was one game that kind of pushed me over the edge to get it, honestly, it was Heavy Rain. Because Heavy Rain is still one of my all-time favorite games. So that kind of pushed me to get a PS3 specifically. But I was more like, well, I can get the PS3. And yes, it can double as a game system. But it can play my DVDs. It can play music, movies. I can put stuff on the hard drive. 
And what else was it? And it could play, you know, Blu-rays. We didn't have a Blu-ray player at the time. So my dad and I kind of went half and half in on that. So that was pretty cool. But I really didn't start gaming again until I was about to leave. About a month before I quit, I actually also started getting into 360 modding. I bought a flashed 360 from a coworker of mine. And that's when I learned, you know, how to back up your games and patch them and all that. And I started making videos on it. So I was I was starting to get into the Xbox 360 modding scene. And because I only had flash drives, the only things you could really do with them were play games. So I started kind of picking up games. And this is also a time when I, I tell people, I tell a lot of people that the thing is, from 2009 to 2011, I barely played anything. Like, literally, my, my per month timing per, like, gaming session, I guess you can say... I went from playing, as I said, you know, like 40, 20 to 40 hours a week to 30 minutes a month at most, like 30 minutes a month. And that was it. But there were a decent amount of games that came out at the time, but there were just a lot of games that were not that good that came out from 2009 to 2011. There was just kind of a dullness of games. And at the same time, there is a bunch of games from that time period I cannot play and enjoy. And I can't tell if it was just the games suck. Or it was just because it came out at that time where I just looked at gaming as the worst thing ever to ever exist. And I was not nice about it at all. Like, if you were talking to me about video games and all this, is like at school or some at work, I had to, you know, deal with it. But at school, if people were trying to tell me about video games and all that and, like, all these hours they played, I would, I would seriously, I would say stuff like this. I'd be like, why the hell are you wasting your time playing that game? That's stupid. You could be out doing something. Like, I was, I was not nice about it at all. I was extremely pessimistic. I was a straight asshole about it, not going to lie. I'm not like that anymore, of course. But that was just like the hatred I had for video games. And a lot of people asked me, if you don't like video games, why do you work at a game store? Well, one, the discounts were nice. And two, I loved the coworkers, the actual job. I know a lot of other people. Like, some people, they might not understand that. But I know some other people. For example, uh, one of my good friends... Recently, he just got offered a job that was, uh, it was at another place he would have gotten paid more, it was in something he was passionate about, but he decided to stay back in his other job. Reason being is that he took a tour of this new job, and he didn't really like the company, he didn't really like the people, and he really liked all of his old co-workers at his old job, so he, he decided to stay back. And it's things like that that keep you going. Your co-workers, your environment, things like that are really important. They'll put a smile on your face. They'll make you, you know, wake up and, you know, hop out of bed and go to your job. That's how it works. And it could be the greatest or the worst thing ever. <laughs> but yeah, so I started playing video games probably about a month before I quit. And it was in part to me leaving and in part to modding systems. It was a mix of the two. And it was great to get back into gaming. It really was. It was really nice because that's when games, you know, late 2011, that's when some good games started coming out again. Now, there were a few games I ended up finishing over this time period. There were a few exceptions. Uh, Heavy Rain, I remember I finished. Black Ops, I finished. And Modern Warfare 2, I finished. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 is actually funny with this because I remember I pre-ordered it from GameStop because I was like, you know what? I might as well pre-order it. I pre-ordered it from GameStop mainly because my friends bugged me about it. Put down my $60, right? This is before tax and all that, of course. A friend of mine needed a new Xbox, so he bought the Modern Warfare 2 edition of the Xbox 360. And he said, Danny, I don't care about this game at all. I'll sell it to you brand new for 45 bucks. Just drive out to my house and you can get it. So the day Modern Warfare 2 came out, the people at GameStop thought I was crazy. Because I walked in there and they're like, oh, hey, you here to pick up Modern Warfare 2? I was like, no, actually, I'm here to take out my deposit for Modern Warfare 2. And, like, the guy just, like, he was, like canceling my pre-order and giving me the money back and he just had this dumbfounded expression on his face because Modern Warfare 2 was one of the biggest titles to ever launch it was a huge deal so I went there I picked it up and I remember I played through the story I played through the multiplayer I played through Spec Ops a little bit but I remember there was one night it was like the first week or week and a half it was out one night it was me and like five other friends we're all on Modern Warfare 2, and we played for about three and a half, four hours straight. And all that lie, it was fun. I had a lot of fun with it, you know, I didn't see any issues. Then eventually we all started going to bed, we fought, we turned off our Xboxes. Playing that three and a half or four hours of Modern Warfare 2 seriously burned me out of gaming for the next four months. Like, that's how bad my gaming had gotten, my non-gaming life had gotten. <laughs> or technically my gaming life, I guess you can say. 
But that is how non-existent it was. I got burned out from that. And then afterwards, I remember for a week, like for two weeks afterwards, my friends kept wanting me to get on. And they were saying, Danny, you know, you should hop on Marvel for two again. It's really fun. You should hop on. We had fun that night. You know what I did? I got so pissed off. I took the game and sold it to GameStop. So I was just like, whenever people asked me about it, I was like, no, I'm not playing it. I sold it already. I don't want it anymore. The game was pissing me off. Just like, just looking at the game right there, looking at it at my desk, just pissed me off when it was sitting right there. That is how bad it was for me, <laughs> which is so hard to believe now. It's just like that, that would not have an effect on me. But honestly, the takeaway from this story is sometimes too much of something you love can really kill it. I've had it before with foods. I love foods and I get burned out on them because I eat them so much. And for years, I cannot eat them. And that happened with gaming. And some of my friends have asked me, you know, you love computers, you're going into computers. Are you afraid the same thing might happen? And really my answer to that is no. I don't, I can't imagine it happening because here's the thing. I started gaming when I was like eight or nine years old. I had my ins and outs with it. I would stop gaming. I would start gaming. As I said at the beginning of this commentary, there were multiple other times, for example, uh, I, I'd taken months hiatuses without gaming. Gaming is not required for life, is what I'm trying to say. I, if I needed to drop my gaming right now, I could. You know, I'd probably be a bit more bored than I normally am. But if, I, if something happened and it required me to just completely stop playing games, I could easily do it. I would just be a little bit more bored in life. That's, that's really all there is to it. But I would think of something to do. While it's with computers, that's something I use my computers all the time. I use technology all the time. I've been a tech head since I was barely walking. I've always been fascinated with computers, with technology in general. So that is something, it's just, it's been ingrained with me since I was a child, and I don't think it can be taken away. And also, there's so many areas you can go into with computers. And even if you don't go into a computer area, wherever you work, you're going to have to use a computer. You might have to run a spreadsheet, a Word document. You might have to use a UPC system. Anything like that is going to require a computer. There are very few jobs out there, out there that do not require you interacting with technology at all. So I don't think that will happen again, thankfully, but... You know, that's why I've even said before, I've told friends personally, I don't know if I've said on here, but I've said, you know, I don't think I would ever do YouTube full time as well, because there are times I get a bit burned out on YouTube. Now, normally what I do, I just kind of take a break from it. And thankfully, I, I make enough mass content to the point where I could just kind of schedule it. So that's how I've kind of prevented myself from getting burned out. But you know, if I did YouTube full time, this was the only thing I did as a job. I couldn't do that. I, I would get burned out, I think within a year or two, honestly. <laughs> But yeah, that is my that is my long story of how working at a game store really ruined gaming for me. It was a combination of the the terribleness and the hatred and the pessimism that you get from working in retail combined with, you know, hormones and changing your social life and all that. And I think also a bit combined with games just sucking for a few years. That's all there was to it. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone. Stay gaming for me. <laughs> Later, everyone.